human beings have been on this earth for million odd years, but we have failed to create a real human society where everybody can live in peace and harmony. Most of the approaches of present humanity fail in ecology, social, internationally. We fail and fail because the world is seen as something physical, purely physical. But in reality, it's much more than that. We're living in a time of rapid change. The world's become smaller, and now our task is to find a common platform. In 1955, in the small town of Jamalpur in India, the Ananda Marga organization saw its first dawn. The tiny organization quickly grew in size and is present today in every corner of the world. The founder, P. R. Sarkar, firmly believed in the possibility of creating a world where humans could peacefully coexist with one another and live in harmony with nature and the universe. He called his philosophy for change Neo-Humanism, which would be implemented through education, social service and yoga. In this production, we take a closer look at the work and dedication of some of Ananda Marga's monks, nuns and volunteers, who dedicate their life to service. Welcome to A Journey in Joy. at the moment because of the competition for basic requirements in some countries or even for jobs in well-to-do countries gives children, families the feeling that everyone's on their own. Neo-humanism gives me the feeling that I'm not on my own, that I'm, I'm here with other people. Naturally, as human beings, we have a certain group sentiment. I belong to this religion, you belong to that country, etc. The conflict arises when it becomes an us-them situation. However, if we include and identify with all people, all beings, and we include them in a group, then who do we have to fight against? So, new humanism, you know, is a way of trying to break down the barriers between one heart and another and to uh, express the love which we have in the human heart to embrace the plants, the animals, the humans and all beings. So we need a spiritually oriented uh, philosophy that will impress on us that we are spiritual beings and we have to take care of all. We should be able to share all the wealth of the universe, and neo addresses that issue. Have you ever seen how the life is for the homeless and the poor? Have you ever thought of the life lived by a father sent to
It's an extension of humanism, which says that all human beings, anywhere in the world, any color, any race, are all part of one human society. Neo-humanism takes this feeling one step further to say that not only all human beings, but all beings are part of one family. The question now becomes how to create a society that's based on neo-humanism. In Australia, Ananda Marga runs two primary schools which teach in accordance with neo-humanism. The River School, located in Mullaney, began in 1995 with 23 students. Today, the school has over 200 students from kindergarten to seventh grade. Its principal, Dada Ratna Devananda, is a yogic monk of Ananda Marga and has been a driving force in establishing the school. The biggest problems of our planet are how we're interacting with each other. And if we are able to develop that, that deeper respect, not only for human beings, that, that we're able to work out our differences in a very um, in a very human way, in a very spiritual way, it also helps us take into account our whole nature, all the trees, trying to create that balance in the world. Here at the Roof School, we learn to take care of each other and care for nature and stuff. And I think that'll help me in the future because we all need to care for the environment and each other. I just think this whole neo-humanist aspect is really what allows the children to understand who they are in the world. And um, one of the things I loved was at the end of last year, I asked them what was what was something they could take away from this school that would help them throughout life? And a lot of them said the Virtues Program. They felt that it had made them a better person and it, they felt that it had helped them understand other people. At the River School, new humanist values are nurtured through the study of valuable human traits or virtues. Every week, students choose a virtue to focus on and put into practice during their study and interaction. Vistara School located in Lismore, places similar emphasis on virtues. For over 20 years, this Ananda Marga kindergarten and primary school has been catering for the individual needs of each child. At Vistara, the yearly school play is a big event. Sometimes we will put children in situations or, or positions, roles within the school play to help them develop certain virtues or characteristics that they need to bring out in themselves. And so even the actual casting of roles we really take um, serious and not just see it as a performance but see it as how that's going to develop the child. Um, to the best that they can be. You said something about the rubbish. The rubbish, so it gets recycled. Yeah, and it comes out as space again. So it comes, what does it come back out as? Space, normal air. So it comes back out as air that you can breathe on your planet. 
What a fantastic idea, what a good recycling idea. Constantly every year, um, they, they, you can see that everyone put in a big effort and that's, um, that's part of the virtues you learn at Vistara, that you learn how to be, that you just determination and how to be confident in yourself and enjoy what you're doing and try your best. Inherent in neo-humanistic education is the belief that meditation removes insecurities, loneliness and alienation, while helping to expand one's love and compassion, and is the key to a greater understanding of one's connection to the world. It gives them an opportunity, even those children that don't fully understand meditation, what it does is gives them an opportunity to just be in their own space. And I think acknowledging that they are allowed to be in their own space and just to be and to be still and calm is actually really, really important. Meditation is amazing because you just get to go inside yourself and look at what's inside you and just really explore it because you don't get many chances to do that. So relaxed and every morning it's amazing doing it. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. The practice of meditation is also emphasised at the Ananda Marga Polytechnic College of Southern India. Here, over 700 students, who are training to become engineers and computer scientists, also learn about the values of neo-humanism. Currently, universities are only concentrating on this first aspect of education, namely education for getting knowledge to get jobs. We have forgotten the second aspect of, of education, namely how to use education beneficially for society that they live in. Ananmark Education is now bringing the two together to provide a holistic education. Education should be every child's birthright, but today, millions do not get this opportunity. Due to social conditions and economic pressures, many families cannot afford to send their children to school. In some areas of the world, there is not even a school for miles around. In such areas, Ananda Marga has attempted to set up new humanistic schools to improve the lives of the people through education. Education not only facilitates individual change, but is the key to social change and development. Neo-humanistic schools teach us that all beings are a part of one family, and as such, social service becomes more than just a duty. Service becomes joy. streets of Nairobi, Kenya, children struggle to survive. Those without a home or family experience the brunt of hunger. 
every Sunday, Ananda Marga's food distribution center offers a humble but nutritious meal. At least once a week, the hunger is stilled, and for a few hours, the rough reality of the streets is forgotten. We cook rice, we cook sometimes ugali, and also bread, we distributed bread to children and also men and women. In the midst of Kenya's vast nature and famous wildlife, almost half of the country's 37 million inhabitants live in poverty. The unemployment rate is shockingly high at 40%. Here, AIDS has been an epidemic for more than 25 years. It is estimated that 8% of Kenya's adults are infected by the disease. Due to severe poverty, the majority of HIV carriers are unable to afford proper treatment. My name is John. I am HIV positive since the year 2002. That's the time I discovered my status. I was worried, afraid, and then I saw there was no life again. I was thinking about death now. I knew I have to die. In a slum in Nairobi, Didi Ananda Ruchira, a nun of Ananda Marga, has found an alternative and affordable way for combating the AIDS virus. Conventional medicine, allopathic medicine, it has its uses, but it is so expensive for people. It's not like it's not available. It is here, but it's, not a, it, it's out of reach for everyone. We in Abolite, we were searching now for affordable way of treating, effectively treating HIV because the doctor said it can't be done. But we found a way. We found a way through naturopathic means, and we found a way through homeopathy. When I started in 2000, we just had one room and struggling like anything to survive. Now we have grown up to be a huge clinic with massage, reflexology, homeopathy, nutrition, everything that will treat a person effectively and yet low cost. It is a dream come true. From that time, I've been coming here, I've been getting natural treatment, counseling, and uh, my life has been going on normal. Now continuing, with my usual day-to-day -day activities without any fear. In addition to the clinic, Didi has started training for those interested to expand Abba Light's work. In 2000, she started the Abba Light College of Natural Medicine in order to teach students how to set up naturopathy and homeopathy clinics in various parts of Kenya. My idealistic goal for Kenya and for Africa is to have a homeopath or an alternative practitioner in every village. And that's the basis of Abolite.
Sao Paulo is divided in two zones, South Zone and North Zone. In this area, it's called the North Zone. It's one of the less developed zones in Sao Paulo. In this area where we work, Jardim Perialto, there is no health service. The schools are very, very backwards. A lot of children on the streets. And these areas are controlled by the drug lords. The purpose of this project, kindergarten and the adolescent center, to take the kids off the street, to build on their self-esteem, to try to put their identity together, and also to try to let them finish elementary education at least. At least doing that, they can they have more chances to enter to the workforce. The Hardin Perialto School was started in 1994 with a handful of children. Today, it has grown into a kindergarten and youth center with over 250 kids ranging in age from 1 to 14. Through art, music, dance and yoga, these kids learn the noble virtues of life and how to escape the harsh reality of the Sao Paulo ghetto. Didi Ananda Jaya's warm-heartedness is a treasure for the local community. Most of the kids, they drop out of school after, after fifth grade, like 12 years old, not knowing how to read, they have to drop out. So what happens to them? Will they become prostitutes or become bandits? You know, I have girls here, like for example, at the age of eight, they have complete sex experience. For a piece of pizza, you will go with somebody. In the project, from the crash to the adolescent, they learn how to love themselves. They learn to talk about, about their emotions. They learn how to handle their emotions, how to live with one another. They learn the importance of an education, and they learn to be better citizens, actually. To let them realize that there's other reality aside from what they see here. There's, there's other things aside from this mystery that they say around. If they can really hope more, they can have more opportunities are open to them, I think their life could change for a better. On the other side of the globe, in Cebu, Philippines, Dada Dharma Virananda has established a holistic natural treatment center after running similar projects in Taiwan and Korea. One of Dada's primary aims in starting the center is to enable local people with low income to receive treatment that is natural, effective, and tailored to their means. Without the use of conventional medicine 
Dada is successfully treating diseases ranging from skin problems to complicated cancers. Many who seek treatment come from overseas. So it's not just a matter of, of an eczema or psoriasis or anything like that. Or did it start in that way? It just came on very, very slowly. Okay, and has it been increasing? Um, even yes, even within got, the last one year? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, let's see. People are coming in here in one state of mind, in one state of body, and they're leaving here in a different state in a state which is going to help them for the rest of their lives. And this place is not only for these people that we're helping, but it's as a global model and a global training center so that we can open maximum other similar Ananda Marga wellness centers in other cities and in other countries. Okay, when were you diagnosed to be diabetic? Uh, about three years ago. About two years ago. Uh, you went to a medical doctor? Medical doctor, yeah. Okay, and definitely you were prescribed? Dave is an accountant from Australia. Through friends at home, he heard about the wellness center and decided to try natural methods to treat his diabetes. After just 11 days at the wellness center, he had already lost 7 kilograms and his blood sugar had been reduced to a remarkably healthy level. I guess the big thing for me, I suppose, is that, um, is that I I want to get my health back together and, uh, and I think at this stage I'm well on track to doing that. There's a whole series of, of various uh, treatments that you undergo, most of which are very pleasurable, I have to say. Um, in fact, there's, there isn't one that I can think of that I don't like or have some problem with. Um, the other thing is that's really worked for me is that I do cardio, which is, in my case, is the treadmill. Wait you see the mess that I'm in about 15 minutes. And the other big thing that's having an impact is that I've been fasting now. This is the eighth day of a fast that I've been undertaking. The fast isn't hard. It's uh, very simple. Um, you, you get juice three times a day at meal times, um, about 350 mils of juice. But, um, on top of that, you take a toxin absorber, which actually is a powder, and that, um, that is designed to actually remove the toxins from your intestines. The side effect is that it doesn't make you feel hungry, so it's, <laughs> that's pretty good stuff. In the Ananda Marga Wellness Center, the practice of yoga is an essential part of treatment. The therapeutic value of the various yoga postures is well documented. If our organs are not stimulated by regular exercise, they have difficulty to function as they should. So is the case with our muscular, nervous and glandular systems, which also need regular stimulation to perform optimally. Meditation is also an integral part of the treatment because it makes us relaxed and happy which makes it a key factor in the healing process. The good thing that I like about the centre is it's not just coming here for some rehabilitation, it's actually a change in lifestyle. So you walk away with the tools to actually maintain what you've done here. Yoga addresses all human needs, physical, mental, and spiritual. Ananda Marga's founder, P.R. Sarkar, also known as Sri Sri Ananda Murti, introduced a new and important science to yoga, known as biopsychology. This is the science of how the biological aspect, the physical body, affects our psychology, our mind and thinking, and therefore, also our actions. The 
physical effects of yoga posture are much deeper than commonly realized. They affect our hormonal system. And there is a very strong connection between hormones and our behavior. Hormones are the seeds of our behavior. Yoga postures, they activate the glands which produce happy hormones and suppress the glands which produce negative emotions or the hormones which mediate negative emotions. It is common today for the yogis to mainly focus on the physical aspect and on the practice of yoga postures. But is yoga just a form of exercise? Or is there more to this ancient science? The main purpose of meditation is self-realization. That means to realize our spiritual potentials. And this meditation helps us to go deeper within ourselves and become aware of our true self. When we become aware of our true self, we find the link with the cosmos, with the universal self. Yoga and meditation help develop us physically, mentally, and spiritually. But in our society today, mostly we develop a lot on the material plane, and a lot of our energy is based on physical things. So in meditation, when we take the time to go inside and explore our inner world, we find a new treasure there, and it gives us so much more depth and love to bring out into the society as well. Through the practice of yoga on a physical and mental level, I am creating my own physical and mental base or environment so that I can experience limitlessness on the spiritual level. Wherever we may be, the strength of mind will help us in becoming successful in the struggle that we are having. And that strength of mind will come through meditation. Concentration of my mind, my unit mind, if it is concentrated, it is merged in the cosmic mind, that concentration is called meditation and that meditation will make our mind so strong that wherever we go, whatever, in whatever field we have a struggle, we will be successful. that limitlessness and that experience of that limitlessness, that intimacy gives a particular kind of joy, a particular kind of happiness, which in yoga is called Ananda. And that is why we call our organization Ananda Marga, the way to Ananda, the path to Ananda, the path to happiness, that special kind of joy which is achieved through a kind of intimacy with divinity, with limitlessness, in a very personal, human way. How can we express the love of human heart in order to embrace people 
of different views, different opinions, different religions, different castes, different creeds, different races, and even to go beyond the human race to embrace the plant world, the animal world, and even the inanimate world, and to recognize that everything in this universe is the expression of that universal consciousness, and they all belong to one universal family. It might take thousand years, millions of years, who knows? Let's start now as Stone Age people and let's see the future, smile, and let's hope for a, a very bright and good future. Ananda Marga, once a small organization, has blossomed and continues to flourish. It is steadily being recognized for its contribution to society, especially for its numerous service projects worldwide. The practical approach of neo-humanism can help elevate humanity to a new era of fraternity and cooperation. Ananda Marga schools seek to cultivate balance and spirituality, the foundation to a peaceful, progressive and happy life. Selfless service makes us humble and purifies our mind. This is necessary in our efforts to achieve the goal of yoga, which is a union with the infinite cosmic consciousness. In deep meditation, when the mind is focused and balanced, one easily grabs the universal ideas of neo-humanism. The prime concern is the welfare of all and serving those in need.